Psst, disclaimer. Hello, traveler. Stay a while and listen. The door behind you is locked. You have no choice but to stay and listen to my terrible memes. Enjoy. Well, good evening, ladies, lasses, and lasses, and welcome to the click. Today, we're gonna do something dandy, fine, delicious, almost as dandy, fine, delicious as you are, but not quite, not quite. Can't reach that level. D and D memes, baby. Hell yeah! So today, we're gonna go on an adventure together, and it's gonna be super fun. And I do hope you enjoy it. Uh, okay, I want my D and D campaign to be serious this time. Ten sessions later. Let the dark harvest begin. This is every time I do a D and D thing. I hate my. <laughs> Been uh, putting treasure chest on the top shelf to hard counter the halfling rogue. Honestly, you need something to counter that stuff. You can also have like, you can't shave your feet, you little shite. Oh yeah, you like them feet hairy, don't you? Famous moment in fantasy roleplaying. Uh, who has the torch? <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Your perception is now zero. Congratulations, you stepped in a hole and died. The party, a dungeon that took weeks to plan. Yeah, but you but gonna skadoodle that booty. This is just bringing up so much PTSD, man. Wendy, nothing in life is free. DM, adventure is free. Cleric, life is free. Bard, love is free. Artifi art 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 artificer, artificer, science is free. Rogue, everything is free if you take it without paying. Shuppity hoppy hop clop clop. Get your own, build it yourself, Ikea today. It's it's just a tree. It's just a tree. When the rules lawyers say that the rule is stated different in the PHP for the fifth time. Behold, the field in which I grow my f Lay thine eyes upon it and see that it is barren. DM, turning an entire campaign into an extreme version of Corruptive Champion. Uh, the party rolling for their PP size. Oh, God. Yeah, we had to do that um during... Not, not gonna, uh, not, no, not going there. I'm gonna DM this like a pro, theater of mine. <laughs> There's a <coughs> dragon with wings and... Flappy. Yeah, cool music, great tokens, detailed battle map. <laughs> oh, there's a dragon with wings. Ah, uh, hold some time. Trying is the first step towards failure. Never go outside. Enjoy this video. When your friend wants to continue a campaign from years ago, but you have to look at your horrible creation again. Uh, uh, uh. The player's not tipping because they don't want to. The player's tipping a few copper because it's accurate. The player's tipping a gold piece because they don't understand the value of gold in D&D. The player's tipping gold pieces to change some poor peasant's life. Oh my god! The best DM in this case would turn this whole thing around, like when the party's in trouble, 15 adventures down the line, that one peasant started their own business using that gold coin and just rallied an army like, Hey fam, I'm here to help you! Woo! And then the peasant dies a tragic death and the whole adventure ends with a with a very emotional funeral. Man, what a, what a freaking good storyline! Holy sh- <laughs> Wow! Behold my newest potion! It gives the effects of a full night's sleep instantaneously! How do you feel? Well, uh, um, I'm still tired, but not my back hurts. It works! I hate this! Lesson learned. You never have to wake up tired or wake up with your back hurting if you never go to sleep in the first place. Ah, just be tired without wasting time in between. Woo! High school. Yes. Mm. College. Adulting. Old. This is just friendship goals. Like, for real. The oldest friends I currently have I met when I was, like, one years old. Our parents took turns, like, looking over us when we were we were the little, little little beans. And we've just been friends since. It's freaking awesome. I play D&D &D with them sometimes, too. I'm gonna be a DM in, like, a week. I have such a good adventure. I have such a good... You wanna hear about, you wanna hear about the adventure I have planned? Hell yeah! So, so here's the adventure I have planned for this party. So, uh, this party is very chaotic, so what I usually do is that I limit it to a very finite area. The last adventure I did, they got stranded on an island. And there was, like, mysteries happening on the island, and it turns out there was a warlock on the island that killed the inhabitants to keep himself young. And then in the end, the whole island sunk because the curse was lifted, and they got to sail away on a boat that was crashed on the island. A pretty, pretty good storyline, and it was all messed up in all kinds of immoral ways. And this time, I have something very nice in mind. They are in a town. There is a party. They're a bit drunk. They they pass out. They they may ha have some have some people giving them attention because they're very attractive adventurers, of course. Not a group of troglodytes. They wake up in the morning. There is a giant force field around the city. No one knows why. Everyone is confused. Everyone is scared. The dead start to rise. But you cannot escape this town. You have to solve 
the mystery somehow before you get overwhelmed by the undead. And the problem is that when the undead kill someone, they also get turned. So it's a battle against the clock to solve this mystery. And the whole thing behind the backstory, of course, I hope no one, if you're watching this video, friend, I'm kidding, I don't have any friends, but if you're watching this video, don't don't watch from this point forward. Uh, the spoiler is that the, the mayor of the town is a necromancer and he created a shield to raise an army and then take over the world and you have to kill him before he does that. So there you go. Beautiful adventure. I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be a disaster. Moving on. DMs after an accidental TPK. I won! I, I, I won? Wait, wait, wait a minute. I'm not supposed to win. Let me, <clears throat> let me see the script. Medium difficulty encounter. Yep, yep. When you're rolling at 20 on your attack, but you're underwater, so you have the disadvantage. All right, then keep your secrets. <laughs> Three rules. No wishing for death, no falling in love, and no bring back dead people. I wish character naughty scenes were described in detail by the DM and the players had to make convincing moans. There are four rules. Honestly, it depends on the friend group. <laughs> it can get so bad, or it can get so funny. <laughs> when your party sympathizes with a low-level villain and reforms her instead of killing her, ah, oh, everyone deserves a second chance. You hear that? Yeah, wholesomeness! When even the villains are turned into wholesomeness, you know that. It's a good party. Swear jar. Making TNT cards, you'll never do play jar. <laughs> <coughs> you die. You go to heaven. All your best friends are there. They're waiting for you to start a D&D session. J.R.R. Tolkien is the DM. Oh my god! Yeah, as long as uh, skip the plot holes. <laughs> Have you watched that? When when they just use the eagles and drop in the ring into the mountain of doom out of orbit? Uh, pretty good life hack. DM. The all-animal campaign is almost ready. Dog fighter, rat rogue, and you wanted to be a cat spore druid? Nope. <laughs> a dandelion. Ah, oh, it's a pun, you see, because it's dandy and also lime, but it's the flower, oh! This just feels like a, like a campaign made for furries, not gonna lie. Why are you looking at me like that? Stop looking, I can see you through the camera, believe it or not. Stop it. DMs, here is a monster that you didn't know you wanted to use. Oh my god, the Hydra Goose. It's gonna be like when, when the players enter the room and this thing just attacks all over them. Oh, geese! Instead of OGs. Oh, I think that was a pretty good pun. You're perfectly welcome to feel proud of me. Thank you. Monk. I, I don't think I did anything that bad. Town guard. <clears throat> well, it says here you did a backflip, snapped someone's neck, and ruined everyone's day. Yeah, that's not you. you you're gonna die. People who don't understand how rule of cool works. A nat 20 should let me do this because there's literally magic in this world. Hmm. Then learn magic. Ah! I had a, a friend of my party do this once. They had a very charismatic bard character, so they were like, Oh, I go up to this town guard and pull down their pants. Like, yeah, now you're arrested and in jail. But what? I'm charismatic. Like, yeah, it's charisma. It's not a magic charm spell that's constantly, like, turned on. Oh, it's so frustrating. Jesus Christ. Wizard reanimates the dead. Artificer creates magic-infused automatons. Druid wild shapes into prehistoric beasts. Barbarians. Mm. Oh man, you guys just wait until next week. Uh, how much do you want to kill one of us? Oh, what? <laughs> Not everything is about killing you guys. Sometimes I just want to maim. Or emotionally scar? That's called character development. Hey, remember that adventure two weeks ago when you lost your arm? How about the other one? The DM explaining why I should play my fourth character before making a fifth. Me already planning a sixth. DM, Artificer, are you attacking with your bow or dagger? Artificer, grenades. Oh, they're like splody knives that you can like... <sniffs> Level 1 wizards when the party decides to spill it up. This will all end in tears, I just know it. Players with a low intelligence barbarian that rages because he doesn't understand things. Playing a high intelligence barbarian that rages because only he understands things. Oh yes. When he's just frustrated with the party. Oh, Hulk frustrated with mediocrity, Hulk smash. Magic missile. Wizard. Bard. Magic missile, magic missile, stop that guy, stop that guy. When the monster is immune to the one damage type you use. Ah, so it's tone deaf. Because I'm a bard. D&D players complaining about miniature prices. Warhammer players. <laughs> oh, yeah. Think, Mark, think. 2d6 represents greater precision, so it gets better average but is harder hitting max. 1d12 represents a more brutal combat style, more easily getting extremes both low and high. Yes, that's that's what I love about the dice. It's so easy to just kind of combine everything into what it wanted to do. Like, oh, are you are you trying to randomly snipe wrong from a distance? Like, yeah, it can hit him in the face and instantly kill them. Or, you know, you can miss grossly 
It's like, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a neat system, really. My player. Hey, can I have the stat block from that awesome boss fight we had like two months ago? I'd like to run it for my campaign. Me, whose boss fights only consist of basic stats like AC, spell, save, DC, and throw. That's more complex than my bosses. My, everything I do is just complete improvisation. Some ideas for boss ability and the minimum damage that a party needs to do to win since I always freestyle. Oh yeah, there we go, there we go, yeah. For epic fights! Oh, and then you add a music playlist to it. Hell yeah. So, my customizable DM screen finally arrived. It's beautiful. It's the May Mace. I love this. Yes, thank you, sir. The fifth edition player's handbook describes Crawlion as androgynous. Androgynous? I'm just gonna do this in a super Swedish accent because I'm gonna butcher all the words. Because then, then it feels more excusable somehow. <laughs> The 5th edition player's handbook describes Corellon as Andrinius, and Deities and Demigods 1980 explains the Corellion alternatively male or female, both or neither. The 2018 rulebook, More the Canaan's uh, Tomb of Foes, introduced the Blessed of Corellon, characteristic which allow player character elves to change their sex at any time. Corellon says, Transrits! Oh! Your god took away your wings for doing something bad. Uh. Yes? So you should at least pray for redemption, forgiveness, if you want to get your wings back. Seems reasonable. So simply pray for your forgiveness and you'll have your wings back. I don't want to ask for forgiveness, I just want my wings. You little shh! When you roll the Warforged character, how you see your character or so other see your character. Yeah! Yeah! I'm back! I promise! Light Cleric never stops talking about their god. The rest of the party, SHUT UP ABOUT THE SUN! SHUT UP ABOUT THE SUN! Oh, Roper of the K, what is your wisdom? Having dark vision doesn't mean you automatically see everything in the dark. Why, why is that so incredibly unnerving? Jesus Christ. Blunder into traps, accidentally triggering them. Carefully check for traps and disarm them with skill checks. Intimidate the cultists into revealing where they put the traps. Blindfold the cultists and force them to walk ahead, using them to trigger the traps. Yes? Like, what else? There is no other option. The Paladin, after blowing up the highly populated city to stop the BBEG from killing four people. I'm a good bay. Ooh. <laughs> it's that kind of thing where, you know, if there's one person tied on the tracks and three people tied on tracks, do you change the direction of the train? But you will also be actionable for, for murdering uh, fewer people and you will have a part in the kind of, you know, that, that, that psychology test. It's that thing. But, but you just kind of made it worse. It depends on the f who the four people are, I guess. God, that sounds psychopathic. <laughs> I'm eating a D&D context! Chaotic good in a nutshell. Great! Who are we helping? I don't want to do a crime, that's a rule! But th that rule is negotiable if the crime helps people! <laughs> Spending $300 on dice. YOLO, baby! At the supermarket checkout, realizing I forgot my $2 coupon at home. YOU IDIOT, THIS IS WHY YOU'RE ALWAYS BROKE! Player 1 explaining how he wants his character to die and move on to the next character. Player 2 explaining how his character will stop at nothing to save his friend. Yeah, he can never die! Oh, thank you. Wow. Hey, my friend is on their way in. They've never played D&D before. Do you think they could play with us today? Definitely. Later on. Hi there! I'm brand new and don't have a character sheet, but I brought pizza! I was told that's basically gold here. No need to worry about a full character sheet. Today you'll be using a simple stat block to get familiar with the system. Oh, cool! Who would I get to play? Pass this book. This monster. Your goal is to kill whoever you can. Oh, neat! I get to be a Tayrask! Looking at DM. You're a sick SOP, you know that? Oh, Jesus Christ, playing like a really OP monster, but they also kind of don't really have a clue what they're doing, so they're extremely powerful, but just kind of flailing around. That, that's, yeah, I, honestly, yeah, that could be fun. Uh, hey, Bucket. Beckett. Think you could teach me how to read properly? Uh, of course, it would be my pleasure. Groovy, let's start with that. Wanted, 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 wanted. Fla no, that ain't it. I know how to spell that. Coming back to the city you initially started in. Ooh, yikes. Party, I just TPK'd. How could you do this? Me of the Chad DM. That was your fault. Your ignorance of my inability to balance encounters killed your characters. It's not my fault. It's your fault for not realizing my fault. Starting a session in the middle of combat. Let's see here. Where were we? In the pit of despair. Da. Beautiful. I love the pit of despair. Everyone is free to play the characters they enjoy. Even if they are min-maxers! Even when they ask stupid questions! My first ever D&D character was a dragonborn fighter. 
who was called Gandalf the Hard. And Gandalf the Hard had a midlife crisis, moved away from family and children, and put together a ragtag team of idiots to go and travel the world. Uh, we had a story piece, which was a flying ship. That's how we kind of got around this fantasy world. And once when we were flying in this beautiful, beautiful flying ship, we saw a hero on the ground, surrounded by zombies, getting brutally attacked, barely fending off the undead. Of course, the DM asks us, do you want to jump down? What do you do? Like, do you want to rescue them? I had an idea, because I had smoothly convinced the DM to tame an owl bear a couple of sessions earlier. So, uh, I wrapped a nice piece of rope around the waist of this owl bear, slowly but surely, uh, put it down like there, and then I just kind of swinged it around so it could like thrash all the zombies, and then we hopped down when everything was nice and safe. That owlbear suffered a horrible fate a couple of sessions later. Rest in pieces, Pluffsy, I, I will miss you. The party meeting a bee. A druid wondering if they can ask it for direction to the nearest tavern. Barbarian starting the conversation, resulting in bee yelling at them in a deep voice. The barbarian, oh, when your checks are so bad, oh, what are you doing here? <laughs> oh, oh, God. How people think D&D works. Trade offer, I receive taunts of hours spent making this perfect for you. You receive a good time. How it actually works. I receive a good time, you receive a good time. One thing I found the absolute best with a group, everyone doesn't have to be a master D&D &D or everything. Like the party I play with at the moment, we have very much have like a simplified homebrew version when it comes to stats and stuff, which is kind of nice. But the best part is when everyone in the group has been a DM at least once, because then they know everything that goes into it, and it makes the party as a whole much more grateful and much more understanding of the effort that goes into actually holding a party. Uh, so if, if you're struggling with the group, that is like a pretty good thing. Cycle through everyone at least once, so everyone has to hold an adventure. It doesn't have to be a super big complex adventure, like a couple of hours or something small, it's enough. But just so they understand what goes into it, and so they understand when the party members are being annoying. <laughs> Welcome, you're about to be born on Earth. First, let's roll your stats, intellect, charisma, and luck. Oh! Oh, God! <laughs> well, that's just me, though. What scheduling starts as? Okay, so every Saturday, 6 p.m. work for y'all? What scheduling ends as? Okay, so does every third Monday, excluding weeks of the full moon at 3.43 p.m. after the proper sacrifices have been made work for y'all? <sighs> the pain. I don't speak thieves can't. I only speak thieves can. Oh, yes! My players bet on a fighting arena, and bet all their gold on a cow. The cow gets a critical hit, beating the opponent and winning the players enough gold to buy tons of powerful magical artifacts. They spend all their gold to buy the cow instead. <laughs> I would do that. Oh, magical, mystical crit cow. Be one of us. Town Guard 1. Remember all the stuff we need to imprison a wizard? Town Guard 2. Yes, sir. Large sack, manacles, leather, mitts, blindfold, leg shackles, and a ball gag. All ready to go. Town Guard 1. Are we forgetting anything? A, a safe word? Oh, this evening is about to be magical. Not really, though, because the magic blockers, but you know what I mean. Remember, kids, monsters are always stronger in their lair. A black bear, CR half. Ooh! Cave bear, CR two. <laughs> It's like a werebear. A player. Who is this guy? DM. I am glad you asked. They are Kralius Kanan, the High Lord of- No, 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 I mean the kobold sitting behind him. The, uh, <coughs> oh, oh, that's Kyle? And, and he likes hugs? I want to talk to Kyle the kobold. <sighs> of course you do. I have this awesome adventure quest with cool characters. Orders Kyle the Hugging Kobold. Can I offer you a good berry in these trying times? Thank you for that one HP. Now I will spend another 15 seconds alive. What color do you want your dragon? <laughs> Red! D&D players, no! That's the color that would kill everyone! <sighs> Enjoy it. When the DM smiles, it's already too late. <laughs> you open the door. Do you go in? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, laddies, lads and lads, that's the end of this video. I seriously do hope you enjoyed this slightly different piece of content. And uh, thank you so much for dropping by. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. And I will see you next time. Take care.